All right, so our attempt to stop Examon fucked up really bad. Like, real fucking bad, though, so... That could have gone worse. It could have. More than one of our allies could have died. It could uh, have been raining. We could have got wet. That would have also been unfortunate. Yeah, okay. It's another thing I'll give you. Uh, apparently, we're sending in the military to try and deal with this motherfucker. Ain't working. Uh, civilians just stay out of sight. Throw EMP grenades. Game over. You may again. You may have cracked the code already. You may have completely dismantled Cyber Sleuth, but I think I brought this up before. How do you know if the world's becoming part digital now? Then EMP grenade is not just going to wipe out a big chunk of reality now. What happens when you just throw a normal grenade? It destroys things. You're not wrong. <laughs> Actually, you're very much not wrong. I guess now an EMP, like a long-range EMP, would now be a nuke. It would basically function like a nuke now of anything in that range is dead. Ooh, I hope no one's watching this video and does that. Well, first our world would have to become part digital, so that's that element. I'm working on it. <laughs> You take, Mark, you take an extension cord, you plug it into your mains in the wall, and then you plug it into a tree. Oh, I see. All right. And that gives you Lord Drasil. Um, <laughs> to be fair, I feel like Mark Zuckerberg would get us there if, if he could. I feel, I feel that's the kind of thing he would do with his weird fucking robot face and his uh, very unethical practices. He, he would do that if he could. Yeah, he goes to Frost Garden Center to research your family tree. <laughs> <laughs> All the most random things to reference. He go for a really local garden center. Fair enough. Which is bullshit because they used to sell tropical fish there, and they stopped. Why'd they do that? Because they, not enough people were buying fish. Maybe because it's a garden center, and they were like, uh, uh, maybe you should go to an aquarium for this. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably it. But I used to get my fish, like, dirt cheap there. Oh, for real? Because the guy I worked with was mates with the guy who run the fish bit. Hmm. Anyway, Digimon. Yes, yeah, so back to the Digimon. <laughs> Away from our fish conversation. I do like the little interactions. I like that Yuko is now, like, one of our main, like, mates, one of our party members, because I do like the interaction she has with us. She is, like, not the voice of reason, but she's, like, the stoic straight man out of all of us. She's like having Luke around, isn't she? She's like, not really wanted, just kind of there. No, no. Well, you say that, like... Until this... he turns evil. Oh, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> Delta Rooney will turn it. He does turn evil, but... Um, no, I say in this, like... I'm not making comparisons to real people, but Yuko, her friendship with us kind of wavers in this episode. Because at this point, she's on a little bit of a... Uh, you killed my father, prepare to die kind of streak. <laughs> she really wants to kill Crusademon now. Ah, uh, so, I've been there, done that. What, wanting revenge for your father's death even though your no, father's I, still with us? when I killed someone else's father. Oh, and then they just made a whole thing of it, and they were like trying to duel you to the death, and you're like, you'd managed to throw a fucking throwing knife right at their chest, and they just kept going. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, what was her dad doing on a zebra crossing anyway? <laughs> I was trying to like Princess Bride this, like push it towards that reference. <laughs> you just made it really, really, you just made it feel more real. I don't know how to feel. But he was in a black and white suit. I didn't see him. He blended in. <laughs> He's like a chameleon, but for dying. <laughs> oh dear. I like that I footpath to get across uh, roads in the UK are all named after animals. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've got the pelican, the penguin, the zebra. All animals that you would love to run over. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is some wild shit. So here we are in a new level of Kowloon. We're actually on level 5 now, the deepest we've gotten with it. Cool. And the only thing in this level is a big fuck off wall we cannot pass. So here we are to try and provide some help. I'm trying to tell Yuko to come fuck down, this is fine. Yeah, you know, we, we got this. And she tells you to fuck off, actually. <laughs> I'm getting my revenge. You can fuck yourself if you think you're going to stop me. And I kind of like this. I like that you, even though we did the whole, like, saving her and pulling her out of a uh, depression kind of arc, she's still pissed off and she has the right to be pissed off and she's so taking it out on us. The moral of the story is if your friend's depressed, don't try and pull them out of it. Well, no, because then we'd be all super dead. 
we'd have been murdered by a giant enemy crab if that had happened, so... Yeah. So now it's a question of do you help your depressed friends or do you get killed by a crab? You try and help people and sometimes you get backlash from people when you have good intentions and that's fine. Advice from David. There you go. But even here she's like, yeah, we're not friends. I I'm the CEO of a company. I have my own shit to deal with. We are not friends. And I'm like, I was there with you when you were like, when you were grieving for your brother, like you go. <laughs> You and I are not friends. Like, just straight up telling you that. And I love this response. I love Takabe's default response here. Oh, anyone who would tell me that I'm not their friend would probably make a good friend. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, Takabe? <laughs> Only a friend would act unfriendly to me. Yes. Yeah, I like you. You tell it how it is. I like you for that. I respect that. Takumi just got a big goofy grin on his face and she's just not, she's not dealing with your bullshit right now. <laughs> she's like, I don't want to fucking deal with you. I'm mad at the moment. Oh, do you know who else wouldn't be fun to deal with right now? Curly Dick? Yeah! <laughs> Absolutely not. Aww. Here he comes. Guess how long he talks about eaters for. I'm going to put the headphones down. I'll see you next week, David. <laughs> oh, no. That's enough recording today. Bye-bye. Dan, it's fine. I found a way around it in terms of editing. It's fine. Do not worry. But here's the real kicker. Obviously, we've established at this point that Suedo is not our friend. He's turned Arata into an incomprehensible eldritch nightmare person. So, you know, obviously, we shouldn't trust him. Here he is. It, it, this is an alternate universe where Suedo, you know, compresses his thoughts into small and brief sentences so that he's actually summarizing shit. Imagine living in that world. Um, <laughs> yeah, but even though he's clearly not on our side, this is where he makes a case for himself and explains, you need me to progress, and we do. Oh. <laughs> he's such a piece of shit. He's so good at playing both sides. But even after making it like, making it decisively clear that he is an antagonistic force towards us, he's still like, yeah, but, you know, how are you going to get past this wall without me hacking it down? How are you going to do that, eh? 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 Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Here I am. So I know. Everyone's favourite. His partner is Pete the Cat. Oh, that's a bold claim, Dan. That's a very bold claim. Justify that. Because I don't like both of them. You don't like Pete the Cat? What the fuck is wrong with I you? I reckon he's like a super boss when he warp digivolves. I reckon there's something mischievous about him. Ooh, okay. And I don't like cats. <laughs> I'll say that. That play, are you more of a dog person then? I mean, you do have two dogs, so yeah, I guess so. Uh... I hated my neighbor's cat. Mm. Absolutely hate it. I get home and it just jump through my window and it's on my bed and I'm like, you don't fucking live here. And it would lift its head, look at me and go back to sleep. <laughs> oh, that's a powerful move. Or if it was a little bit chilly and I was sitting on my computer, it would just sit on my lap and go to sleep. That sounds adorable, Dan. That sounds cute as fuck. And if in the middle of the night I wake up and I'm just like fucking exhausted, I open the window it climb in, I'd lay back down and it would curl up between like my chin and my chest and just curl up and go to sleep. And I'm like, you're, you're not even a fucking year old. You're only like a kid and you're like six months old. Dan, can we swap houses? I want a cat that breaks into my house and snuggles with me, actually. I think that would be lovely. He was a fucking dickhead. I don't like him. <laughs> and next door would knock and go like, can we have our cat back? And I'd be like, fine, he's in my room again. <laughs> Trade him. Make him stop. <laughs> Make him stop coming in and cuddling me. Don't you just hate it when cats cuddle you? So affectionate and sweet. Why can't they be aloof like normal cats, you know? <laughs> Alright, well, Suedo's knocked the wall down. This would be the point where I then turn to Suedo and start punching fuck out of him. And then leave him to, like, bleed out on the floor. But I guess that's not our course of action. We are just teamed up with him now. So there we go. Gotta tolerate his bullshit for the rest of this dungeon. It's like how you put up with my bullshit every recording. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? I'll show you my curly dick. <laughs> <laughs> God. 
Now, I do not get this puzzle. So, hacker hint. If you think you're a great hacker, you know not to underestimate what looks like nothing at all. Eden's a collection of data. Easy to forget with the barrage of data sent to avatars as five senses, but this is not the real world. Like, this is just re-establishing how this world works. A, path, a place you thought was a path could become something different. Darkness lies ahead. Now, do you know... So, with that in mind, what way do you think I need to go? Backwards. No, actually. I, I thought that at first. I was like, oh, do I need to go back or something? But, oh, shit. Well, we'll worry about Ooh. that in a minute because we have this uh, ultimate level fucking Lopmon evolution. The one that has those weird, weird fucking gangly arms. <laughs> I don't know if I love or hate this thing's design. I'm very torn on it. I like it. It's like meow. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you mean like Gigantamax Meowth? With the, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I just meant General Meowth. <laughs> I was like, explain yourself. <laughs> explain immediately. Anyway, yeah, darkness lies ahead. Oh, okay. So that just leads me into a void when I run forward. And now I'm trapped in a little room. I leave the little room. And I'm back at the beginning. So maybe when it said darkness lies ahead... It meant, like, if you run straight forward, there's a dark portal there. But, I, ch I checked, if I take the left path, there's a dark portal there as well. So what does that mean? How do I figure that out if not by trial and error? <laughs> Did I have to, like, turn invisible or what? I literally do not get it. The cryptic puzzle literally makes no sense to me. <laughs> you throw your Digimon in front of you and see if they fall through. That would be cool. That'd be a cool puzzle if you could, like, send your Digimon forward and just get them to... <laughs> to take the fall. All right. Oh, this bit—you could be just mean to Yuko in response to her being mean, which I kind of like. So, oh, you, you've got sheep personality. Ah, wow, you're actually a bitch in disguise, or oh, you're black-hearted. I went for the second option, even though they're all pretty bad. You jerk. <laughs> <laughs> if this wasn't a 12 rated game, I would have swore at you there. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Here we I go. I think the phrase, dick move, bro, can be used in any conversation at any time. Maybe not with the bro at the end, but dick move is powerful. Because it can mean literally any action taken with any kind of ill intent. It's a very generalized term for an uncool thing to do. So, so you don't yeah. think adding bro at the end would work. Or some people aren't bros. <laughs> if you say to like a girl or a non-binary person calling them bro it feels weird. I think if you do it to everyone like how I call everyone son. <laughs> you do do that including your father which is weird as hell. <laughs> yeah when he comes in. Hello Dan. Hello You're son. Right, you're right son. <laughs> and he always stops and looks at me awkwardly. That's the only way to respond really. So we have another one of these Code scan puzzles. I'm like, maybe this one will make more sense. So let's see what this one says. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you think you're a great hacker, you won't hesitate to go anywhere. Even places you thought were dangerous. We're hackers, aren't we? I don't know if it's telling me, all right, jump into the black holes now? An off-limit path or a secret door? Those restrictions don't apply to us. No one tells us what to do. I do not get what this is getting at. Go to the women's bathroom. No. <laughs> it's not that. And you can't do that, unfortunately. I've tried. <laughs> there is a there is a pair of toilets in the Nakano Broadway, but... Oh, like... you mean the game? If we meant real life, no. you tried it. <laughs> so anyway, here I am just like, okay, well, I get... Okay, I just ran forward and I didn't hit any dark holes. And I'm at the end of the dungeon now. What was the point of that whole text log? What was it trying to convey? <laughs> Well, what's she going to become? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm actually de digivolving her back to uh, Lady Devimon, who's always good. Always nice to have her around. Yeah. And I'm actually going to raise Lady Devimon, uh, boost her cam up to 100, fuse her with Angel Woman, and have my own Mastermon as well. Oh, good. You can have your own. Yeah, exactly. Now that we've seen her in the cutscene, she's now unlocked for us to just get. We can get her now. Anyway, we have another Royal Knight here. Hello! <laughs> what is that? 
He looks like the Iron Giant from Final Fantasy X. But if he were much less intimidating and goofier. <laughs> Digimon with huge spear. I am Craniumon. You shall not pass. Ah, fellow Lord of the Rings fan, I see. I love Tolkien's work. I, I saw that and thought, and my first thought was Skeletor on Halloween. <laughs> he wanted to be a little bit extra. <laughs> Skeletor does himself up. <laughs> <laughs> this is my glow up, he man. <laughs> oh, that's it now. It's got to be a Skeletor voice. <laughs> the human who assisted Crusader Mon. <laughs> I like that his reading of it is that Suedo got betrayed and Suedo's like, well, uh, no, but okay, believe what you want. <laughs> As if Suedo's not the main fucking villain of this game. He can't not be. He has to be. <laughs> and, uh, this isn't me speaking as someone who's beaten the game. I'm about to take on the final dungeon. Suedo is still on our side. I fully expect to be backstabbed and betrayed by him. I'm sure we will be. Because <laughs> it's Suedo. <laughs> Curly's dick people. Typical. Yep, all those typical Curly's dick people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was me to me, but... <laughs> you were trying to rack your head for something and it, and it didn't come out quite right. I was just thinking, out of all your subscribers, I bet like 5% of them have curly dicks. Oh, and you didn't want to make them feel bad. You didn't want to, you didn't want to, you didn't want to alienate our viewer base. No, I know you have a lot of like really attractive female subscribers. Oh, of course, yes. Anyway, <laughs> I like Cranium on there like, who the fuck is this guy and why won't he shut the fuck up? <laughs> shut up, Suedo. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you ranting about eaters for another five minute spell, which is what he did there. That's what I cut out. Yay. So I'd like, like to see your time log, how long it you've played this game for. Uh, anytime I go to save, it pops up. It's a couple of hundred hours now. I think it's wow. nearing 200 hours. But that's because I'm trying to get every single Digimon now. I, I realized how many Digimon I was getting. I was like, well, I may as well get them all. I may as well do a catch them all run. Do you get anything for doing so? Nope. You get a f feeling of good. <laughs> you get a feeling of accomplishment and maybe a PlayStation trophy. That's... I know this girl. For like 20 quid, she'll make you feel good. Oh, for 20 quid? Is that all? Shit. I mean, <laughs> hit me up, genuinely. <laughs> Damn, it's a good deal. Alright, so with my crown slice, I shall crush you, He-Man! I went through like three different voices there. I went from Welsh to monster to skeleton. And I like this, Suedo pissed him off, and then he goes, Hmm, this guy wants to kill us. I'm gonna go step behind you now and let you deal with the violence. After I pissed him off! Are you a piece of shit, Suedo? Even when you're on our side, you cause problems. <laughs> you are the worst. All right, Why so don't you get that scan thing where it says like 10, 20% when you face a boss? Uh, I think when you face a boss, it doesn't count towards because it's a scripted battle. So you're not necessarily fighting that Digimon at the stats it would be. You're fighting a predetermined battle against a boss. But you so. should still be able to scan it, so if you face it multiple times, you can get your own. Well, that's the thing you don't. Face it multiple times, you face him once. Yeah, but you should be able to. You can't, because he's after. Th there's only one Cranium on, and after this, not to spoil, he dies. We kill him, so he doesn't come back. It's not, it's not like just a random encounter now that you could just run into in any old place. I want a game where you can do that then, where you just like random encounter the final boss of the game. I mean, there are games where you, similarly, like with Final Fantasy 1, there is like an encounter near one of the final bosses who is stronger than anyone else in the game. And he's got like a 1% chance of appearing. So if you're really unlucky and you just happen to be going through this dungeon, you could just get bodied immediately by a boss that's way stronger than anything else you can face. But yeah. Anyway, I kind of like this guy's gimmick. He can make himself invincible. He can like put his shield up and like block attacks. So you then have to like hit him once to knock the shield out and then hit him with the move you want to hit. So if you're sitting there trying to buff your attacks up or make yourself hit hard, 
he's going to stymie that. And he kind of gets in the way of it. He also does this move, which does a fuck ton of damage to everyone. Ooh. But when he does that, he slows himself down. So you then have to decide, kind of like with Machine Drum on, am I going to heal myself? Or am I going to start attacking him now that he's vulnerable? I decide both. Takumi is actually the fastest. If you get Takumi to use an item, that's faster than using a like aura or a healing ability. So then you can just start attacking, 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 and just trying to kill him off. Which is what I go for. That is my method right there. But yeah, Cranium on here. Like I say, pretty decent boss fight. I got him on my first try. So he's not a... Maybe not for me, but he doesn't seem to be quite as hard as the other Royal Knights. But he definitely has his little perks. There are little moments where he had me sweating, so... He, he's earned his Royal Knight title, is what I'm saying. He deserves to be considered a knight. Going by my judgement of him, at the very least. Couple more quick blasts to the face. Oh, yeah, that fucked him up real good. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, the only reason that actually was so effective is because I've used Bug on him to swap his uh, weaknesses and strengths. Because my old team were pretty bad against him, then I realised, oh, if I just swap you, if I invert you, then all my guys are good against you. This is much better for me. Should have done this earlier, but whatever. Get dead. And he's actually dead dead. Most Royal Knights will get to 1 HP and the battle fades out. That that was him actually dying. We, we have killed him. So, uh, fucking rip, man. You were just doing your job as a knight, I guess. And now you're dead. <laughs> so there we go. To think I could lose. No. To think I could lose and to be beaten so soundly. Curse you, He-Man! My heart was rife with confusion and doubt! I feared these feelings, mere slivers though they were, could not be misgivings about King Drasil or Leopardmon and his companions! But indeed they were! <laughs> so he's having his like moment of... Uh self-reflection here, just as he's about to die. So it is like, good, you understand now, you are an independent person, and now you die, now you perish. This is fine. You have free will, and that's all I care about. Not whether you live or die. Suedo's just a fucking weirdo. I don't get him. <laughs> don't understand him. Even still, where I am in the game, I don't quite get Suedo. And yeah, Craniumon is just done. He's dead now. Just dissipating away. Returning to the Digi-verse, I guess. You are beyond my comprehension! Do you think they studied at Digiversity? <laughs> sure, Dan, why not? <laughs> Whatever makes you sleep at night. <laughs> I like this as well. Yuko is like, you're, you're acting sad that he died, but you wanted him to die. You planned for this. And he's like, yeah. Doesn't mean it's not sad. <laughs> yeah, I killed him. Yeah, we killed him, but we could be sad about it. That's fine. Anyway, we fuck up that thing, and now Examon has lost his source of power. We should actually be able to go take him on now and defeat him properly. Or at least that's the hope. I like this, Yuko threatening to kill him. <laughs> if you killed my father, I will... I will repay you. On that one. And here's the kicker. He doesn't say no. He says, oh, his death was a tragedy. He is one of the few men I respected. Didn't say he didn't kill him. Doesn't say, oh, I didn't kill your father. That's all he's saying. He's very clever with his words. I still regret I was unable to halt Crusadermon's rampage. I know the pain of losing a family member, all with a big grin on his face all throughout. They're related. Who's related? Oh, you think Suedo and Yuko, what if they're related? Ooh, okay. That's an interesting one. That's very interesting. 
Can you justify that one? They're both wearing black and white. Yeah. They both have curly dicks. Incorrect. <laughs> Hers is <true>. inverted. <laughs> no. Incorrect. Not true at all. Feel um, free to bleep that out. <laughs> no, fuck, I'll keep it. <laughs> but yeah, Suedo here seems to have some baggage. He seems to have some bad memories that he doesn't want to confront. And his vision, his big goal is that all humans will be free from sadness. He's actually Izzy from the first Digimon series. All right, your speculations are getting really wild now. I don't know what to even, I don't know what to even take with that one. We must drive out the grief from this world. All grief should be gone. Like this is just a full-on RPG final boss speech. Like <laughs> what, The mask's just completely off now, isn't it? He's upset because he lost Pete the cat. Ooh, Dad. And then when he finds Pete the cat, he's like, you know what? Forget the war. Stop it. That would be fucking. Mmm. Do you know what? I'm gonna say that you're wrong, but that would have been awesome. You're wrong, but I actually like that more than it does go. I think I love that idea. That Suedo is just very, in a lot of grief about his cat. Then again, uh, Suedo's quite an old man, and this all started quite a long time ago, so... Yeah, but how do Digimon age? Damn, Dan, you are, you are, on, you are, you are onto some cool shit. We need to start writing <laughs> things, Dan. We need to, like, start writing stories, or at least, like, finishing them. You should play that game that a lot of writers do, where you take the first, like episode or the first like film from someone like jj abrams who like setting up easter eggs or mysteries and then try and finish it yourself to see where it goes we should do that i, feel I like tried that with some... game of thrones but i just add the sentence and then they all had sex that is how game of thrones goes anyway yeah i predicted right <laughs> that's how it that's how it be that's he the killed show his own brother and then they all had sex Game of Thrones. Da -da 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 -da. So uh, after all of that, you know, after all of that frustrated lashing out, Yuko does apologise to us. Like, hey, I'm sorry I was being a dick to you. We are we are friends. I'm sorry. Here's the thing I just noticed I don't like about her desk. What about it? Why is her monitor and that so far away from the front of the desk? Because that's bad for your eyes to have it right up to your face. You yeah, know, but that's like way too far. Look at the size of her compared to the desk. That yeah, but like... the, the, look, invertly, the, inversely, uh, look at the size of the monitor. That's a fucking big monitor. Yeah, but it's You wouldn't far away. want that too close to you, otherwise it would actually be like a nightmare to deal with. Yeah, but she's got like glasses. <laughs> they're not binoculars, they're glasses. <laughs> That's what I mean, let's stop like the UV rays from the, or whatever it is from the TV screen. God, wouldn't it be great if we were sponsored by some of those UV glass companies that some YouTubers are? That would be awesome. God damn it, I'm annoyed that we aren't. Raid Shadow Legends, <laughs> please sponsor us. 